Welcome back to Reading with Miss B, Boys and Girls. Today we're going to be reading a story called Elephant Journey. The true story of three zoo elephants and their rescue from captivity. Boys and girls, this story is a true story about the last three elephants at the Toronto Zoo. We no longer have elephants at our Toronto Zoo. Do you want to know why? Well, we're going to read the story to find out why. Before we start the story, I want you to ask yourself a question. I want to ask you to think about whether or not you think Canada, the climate in Canada and the habitat across all the regions of Canada, I want you to tell me if you think that the climate and habitat of Canada, of our country, is suitable for elephants to live in. Can they flourish and be free and enjoy their lives if they lived in Canada? Why or why not? Before we start the story, I want you to think about this and write your answer down or share it with a friend. So hopefully you've had enough time to share your ideas with someone or to write your ideas down. And this book, Boys and Girls, has a dedication page. A dedication page, Boys and Girls, is a page in the book that's found at the beginning before the story starts. And it's a space for authors and illustrators to um, share or dedicate their book to someone that's important to them. Usually this page is not long. Sometimes it's only one or two sentences and is a sweet heartfelt way to honor someone in the life of the author. So in this dedication page, boys and girls, um, the story Elephant Journey was dedicated in the memory of Pat Derby, who was a tireless advocate for elephants and other animals. Boys and girls, if you don't know what the word advocate means, look that word up. An advocate is someone who... Toka, Tika, and Oringa stood together on a small barren hill. The three friends had no place to roam about, no trees to explore, and no pasture to graze. Every day was the same as the day before. Only the weather changed in Toronto. Sometimes it was hot, other times it was icy and cold. And if you take a look at this picture here, boys and girls, you'll see people looking out over the barriers at the elephants at the Toronto Zoo babies, Toka and Aringa roamed with their families in the warm, dry climate of South Africa. They explored a vast territory with hills to climb and streams to cross. They foraged for grass, fruit, branches, and bark. Like all wild elephant females, Toka and Aringa would have stayed with their mother and family group their whole life. Their male brothers would eventually leave to create their own groups and find other females. But Toka and Oringa were captured and brought to a zoo in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Tika was born at the zoo nearly 10 years after they arrived. Tika had never lived in the wild before. Okay, so there's Oringa and Toka. The zoo in Toronto was nothing like Southern Africa. The ground was hard and dry and uncomfortable on their feet. The enclosure was too small to roam about. So without enough exercise, the elephants gradually became weaker and out of shape. And it was cold in the winter in Toronto, too frigid for elephants used to the warm sun of Southern Africa. Like other zoo elephants before them, the three friends were starting to show signs of ill health. When she got older, Iringa even had trouble lying down and standing up on her own people began to worry that Toka, Oringa, and Tika might not live past their early 40s, which is just past middle age for a wild African elephant. So boys and girls, does this sound like the type of climate or habitat that is suitable for elephants? I don't think so. Boys and girls, what type of climate is suitable or more suitable and appropriate for elephants? What do you know about elephants and what their needs are? Toronto Zoo decided to send the three elephants away to another zoo. But animal protection groups appealed to the city to choose an animal sanctuary in California called PAWS. PAWS stood for Performing Animal Welfare Society, where many animals are protected after living in zoos or circuses. The trip to California could be risky for the elephants, so the plan was to move them as quickly as possible but they had to drive three crates on two flatbed trailers 
more than 2,500 miles away. That's about 4,000 kilometers, boys and girls, or to be exact, 4,100, 4,100 kilometers. Animal welfare groups had crates constructed just for Toka, Ringa, and Tika. While the three elephants became accustomed to spending time in their new crates, the final arrangements were made for their trip. On October 18th, 2013, the rain poured down while a giant-sized crane lifted the three crates onto the flatbed trailers. Loading three four-ton elephants was slow work, and it wasn't until that night that the trucks inched out of the zoo grounds and onto the highway. The trucks were followed by a camper van where elephant welfare experts monitored the elephant's condition with special cameras. After a few hours, the trucks arrived at the border, crossing between Canada and the United States. The officials couldn't believe what they saw, but as soon as they understood the situation, they wished the group well and passed the trucks through the border. The trucks continued on, through the night and the next day, stopping only to refuel, check, feed, and water the elephants and clean out their waste. Toka, Arinka, and Tika never left the safety of their crates. Stopping in Illinois and Iowa, they crossed Nebraska and moved up the high plateau of Wyoming, where the temperature quickly dropped. Roads were clear, but an unexpected snowstorm had moved through the area ahead of them and the winds were still fierce. The trucks swayed back and forth on the highway. Here they are traveling. Across Wyoming and down into Utah and Nevada, they continued. As they approached California, moving up one mountain and down another, the brakes on one truck overheated and smoke began to billow from the wheels. But the driver doused the wheels with water and after 20 minutes, they were ready to continue. After the long journey, a small crowd of people greeted the trucks at the Paw Sanctuary. Toka's crate was the first to be unloaded, next to the elephant barn entrance, followed by Ringa and Tika's crates. Toka slowly backed out, turned around, and took her first steps into the small outside holding pen and a new life. Ringa followed. Tika, the youngest, was anxious about leaving the crate, but after about an hour, she too came out. They soon entered the massive elephant barn. Beyond two large barriers, the three resident elephants, Mara, Lulu, and Maggie, were waiting and trembling with excitement. Soon the barn was full of the sound of roaring, trumpeting, and rumbling as the newcomers were greeted. The elephants stretched their trunks through the barriers and tried to touch each other as they continued to call out. It was as if the elephants were old friends who had been reunited at last. And here you are, you're going to see the trunks of the elephants that were already in the sanctuary trying to reach out for Toka. In the days that followed, the three newcomers got to know their new home. At the zoo in Toronto, their enclosure had been barely one acre of most barren ground. But here, 80 acres, that's eight zero boys and girls, 80 acres of natural land was fenced in and ready for them to explore. Hills, trees, streams, and grasslands. It was as warm as an African spring. Soon, even Oringa, who was being treated for arthritis, was able to climb some of the hills using muscles she hadn't exercised very much since she was a baby. So you can see from this picture, boys and girls, that this seems like it's a much healthier habitat for the elephants. A year later, all three elephants are much stronger and healthier. They can climb the steepest hills. They graze in the long grass, browse in the trees, submerge themselves in the swimming hole, or take a mud bath, or just go off to be alone. And Iringa can lie down in the warmth of the sun and get back up again all on her own. Here she is. It has taken a lifetime, but at last Toka, Aringa, and Tika have a safe home and the care of people dedicated to their welfare. Do you remember what it's called or what we call people who are dedicated to the welfare of others? Advocates. Very good. One day, the gate separating the newcomers from Mara, Lulu, and Maggie will be opened so all six elephants will roam the habitat as a new family group. There we are. But 
But for now, the three friends are content to trumpet a greeting to their neighbors as they bask in the California sun and feel the luxury of soft grass under their feet. That, boys and girls, is the story of the three elephants, the last three elephants at the Toronto Zoo and how they got to their forever homes, their sanctuaries, and are now living their best life in a climate and habitat appropriate for them. After the story today, there are a few questions I would like your class to think about. Number one, how did the story of Toka, Tika, and Aringa make you feel? Did it make you sad that they suffered so much before they got to their forever home? How did it make you feel? Number two, how does being in captivity affect the lives of these three elephants? How would life be different for them elsewhere? Or how is life different for them now? If you had to compare and contrast their life at the zoo in a tea chart and their life now at a sanctuary, how would it be different? Maybe your class can come up with some ways in a tea chart to compare those differences. The third question I want you to think about are, uh, what were some of the challenges that the elephants faced um, and the crew on their way to the sanctuary because they had to travel so far? Can you think of three challenges or two challenges that they faced during their journey? And last but not least, um, there is a lot of factual information about elephants and about the sanctuary um, at the end of this book. If you took a look at that information, uh, tell me one thing you learned, something factual that you learned about elephants that interested you most. Where do you think you could learn more about elephants or maybe other animals held in captivity? And how do you think you could help them and become an advocate for their well-being? These are a lot of questions for you to think about. So feel free to pause the video and discuss these with your student staff or in groups. And hopefully it brings about good conversation. Until next time, boys and girls. Bye.